Hey everyone welcome to our channel and enjoy today's explanation. Stir and Whittle are biomedical research scientists working for Bionine Corporation, attempting to transfer the mind of a dead soldier into an robotic body. Foster specializes in synthetic biology and mapping of the mind's neural pathways, while Whittle's specialty is reproductive human cloning. Foster successfully captures the soldier's neural map and transfers it into the robot's synthetic brain. But the experiment fails when the soldier recoils in horror at the robotic body and destroys himself. Foster's boss warns him that if he cannot get his experiment to work, the company's shareholders will shut the project down. Later, William comes to his home where we can see his wife and three children, Foster's entire family is going out of town for a small trip. It was night during the journey and it was raining heavily, the road was also not completely visible. During this, they are saved from colliding with a truck. Just then a tree is struck by lightning and it falls on their car, Foster's wife dies on the spot by tree's branches. Foster loses control of the car and his car falls into a lake. In this accident his three children also die which means now his whole family is dead. Foster is deeply saddened by the death of his family, but then he calls his friend Whittle and calls him to his location, along with he also asks him to get the memory copying device. A short time later, Whittle arrives and is deeply saddened to see Foster's family dead, Foster asks his friend to take out all the data and details from his family member's mind. Whittle asks him why, but Foster doesn't answer, then Whittle takes all of their information and memories with help of his machine. After taking that, they arrive at their company's lab, Foster tells him I'll make my family's clones. I'll make their duplicate that will exactly appear like them and we will transfer all of their brain's data into other bodies. Whittle urges him to do so because it is a legal offense to clone any human. But Foster doesn't listen to anything, Whittle has to help Foster out of compulsion and friendship. Then they start working on cloning and cloning of one body will take a total of 17 days. But they worry that if their boss comes to know about this work then they may also be jailed. So they arrive at Foster's home after taking all the equipment and machines. Foster asks his friend to bury the dead bodies, and Whitley compulsively does this. But the first major obstacle to his plan presents itself, only three cloning pods are available, it means one of his family member will not be cloned. Foster writes the names of all the members on the paper and chooses one of them and this is the name of his youngest daughter. That means, she will not be cloned and Foster becomes quite upset because he loves his youngest daughter the most. Then he starts to create clones of his wife and remaining two children. 17 days were required to complete this whole process. After being cloned they'll retrieve at the same age at which they died, Whittle informs him if the electricity goes out while cloning their entire experiment will fail. So Foster bring the batteries of the nearby cars and they begin their work. Whittle says that even if we are successful in this work, the brains of your family will also contain the memories of that accident and your little daughter, then what will you answer them? After thinking a lot on this, Foster erases all memories of the accident and their young daughter from the minds of these clones. Days pass and Foster doesn't go to work. When Whittle goes to work the boss asks where Foster is, but Whittle lies to him. The teacher of Foster's children comes to his house, then Foster has lied to her that they has suddenly become ill. Foster sends all false messages even from his wife's phone so that no one bothers him. Along with this, Foster was also working on his previous experiment, he was checking why the army officer's robot has failed. Finally 17 days have passed, Whittle arrives to put out the clones from the machine. After putting all the clones out of the machine they fainted all of them for three days. Because Foster wants to check their brain once again. While Foster's wife was unconscious he keeps his hand on her hand. Foster notices his wife's central nervous system reacting to his touch. He realizes that army officer's robot had failed because the mind expects connection to a biological body with heartbeat and respiration, rather than a synthetic one. Now he knows that transfer into the clones will not be a problem, and the failure of that robot's transfer can be solved by programming a simulated mind-body interface to make the robotic body appear biological. He successfully transfers the minds of his loved ones into the cloned bodies. After three days of unconsciousness his family restores their senses and they look just as they looked before death. 
They do not remember anything about their accident and about the youngest daughter, and this makes Foster very happy. Later, Foster leaves for the office to complete the experiment on that army officer, but now he cannot do any experiments on army officer, because his brain already knows that his body is of human and not of robot. So now Foster chooses himself for this experiment, and he starts putting his brain's information into the synthetic brain. On the other side, we see Foster's wife who becomes anxious frequently, because she was recalling her daughter in her dreams. She often asks Foster about her youngest daughter, but he always ignores this. Not only this, but Foster's older daughter has a nightmare of her mother's death. Foster approaches to her and makes her understand that there is no need to be afraid, because it was just a dream. Now Foster suspects that there might be a trouble, so he faints her daughter and begins to check her mind map after connecting her with the machine. While he was doing all this, his wife comes there and becomes shocked to see this, she asks him about all the matter and what happened to their younger daughter. Foster confesses that they died in a car crash and that he resurrected them. Hearing this, she becomes upset and begins to cry, she feels sad to know that she is only a clone, but she has to accept this truth. The next day, Foster's boss arrives at their home and tells to Foster that, I know everything about the accident of your family and that you have cloned them all. He tells him the research is not actually intended for medical purposes, but is being financed by the US government to provide a military weapon. After that he threatens Foster to give him the device which he used to make these clones or else he will kill his whole family. Hearing this, Foster says okay I'll bring the device. But Foster knocks him unconscious and destroys the device by placing it in a microwave oven, then he begins to flee from there after taking his family. But his boss's men start chasing him. Later, Foster remembers that while making clones of his wife and children, a silver element was put in their body, which is actually a tracking device and this whole game was created by his boss. Foster takes them to his wife's clinic, then Foster shocks them and destroys their tracking device. After it, they plan to escape by a boat, but as soon as they reach their destination, the boss's men also reach there and capture Foster's family and they takes them to their company. Foster remains unable to save his family. After a while Foster also reaches to company, his friend was also there and was being threatened by his boss. It is clear that Whittle has given the information about Foster's family. Foster's boss again demands that device from him. As Foster denies to give that device, his boss shoots his friend. After seeing this, Foster becomes afraid and begins to make a new device for his boss. But secretly he uploads his own mind into Subject Robot. His boss has bad intentions for him, as he gets the device he tries to kill Foster's family. Meanwhile, the robot that Foster has made arrives there, Robot begins to kill all the boss's man, Foster gets a chance and flees out from there. When he comes back to that place the robot is about to kill his boss. But Foster stops it. His boss tells him that I'm about to die but my people will not stop chasing you. Foster offers him a deal that I'll make you alive with cloning, but in return you'll have to free me and my family. Meanwhile, boss agrees and dies after saying that we'll meet soon. Then Foster goes to make his clone but his robot tells him that you've done so much for me, you have given me a new life. So, you can go with your family and I'll look over this all, I'll make the clone of your boss. Later, Foster goes from there after taking his family from there. After 17 days, his boss's clone also becomes ready, boss's clone become rich by working with Foster's robot, selling clone transfers to wealthy people looking for a second life. After it we see Foster's family was having fun at beach and Foster has also made the clone of his youngest daughter as well. The movie ends up with this scene.